Hey guys, I'm Evan. Welcome to Country View Acres. So today we are back out here in the workshop and we are sanding down some of this T111 plywood siding. And uh, we're, we're sanding it down so that we can stain it and it'll take the stain more evenly. So straight from the lumber yard, that stuff is very coarse. It's like a very rough surface. And once you sand it down, it'll take this, the stain nice and even. It's gonna have a nice surface finish to it. But yet we're not sanding too hard. We're not doing too much sanding. We're leaving some of the saw marks. So you end up with these saw marks that are left in the wood. Those rough saw marks will take the stain darker. So you end up getting these dark lines in the plywood. It definitely makes a, a unique look. It makes it almost look like a rough sawn lumber on the walls. And uh, I'm really happy with the way it looks. And that's what we're still trying to replicate and do that on the entire shop. So I'm using a belt sander to sand this down because I think that's probably the fastest thing to use since we got such a big surface area. And this dust bag here, I actually have to empty this twice per sheet. So that tells you how much sawdust or how much I'm sanding this down. It's quite a bit that we're taking off. And I've got six done. I've got six more to go. I'm halfway through. So after we get these all sanded, we'll start staining. So I got all 12 sheets of plywood sanded now and I'm ready to start putting on the stain. So we're using an oil-based stain. This is Minwax and the color is Early American. This is the same stain that we used in the log cabin on anything we stained dark. And we like the color. So I normally just use a brush and brush it on and then we'll wipe this off. But the brush is gonna definitely help get it into the different grooves and the imperfections in the wood. Now let's take a lint-free rag and then I wipe it off. And you can see, hopefully you can see how that looks. You can see the, the lines that it, are darker. That's exactly what we want. We want those lines showing. I think that looks pretty good. So this is still a little dark right now. I think it will lighten up a little bit as it dries. So we've got a total of 12 sheets to get done. All right, got all 12 sheets sanded. Luckily my wife helped me out and she ended up sanding the last three. There's a total of about 12 hours of work here just to get these 12. It's 50 to 60 minutes a piece by the time you count the sanding and the staining. So this is definitely a labor of love to be able to do this. You gotta really want it if you wanna spend the time to sand and stain all this. So we're ready to go ahead and start putting them on the walls. I do have a partial piece left over from the last wall and we're gonna start with that one and then we're just gonna start working our way across. But to make sure that we do run this perfectly straight along the wall, I'm gonna run a chalk line down it and uh, we're gonna mount a two by four on the wall so that I can set the plywood up there and make it easier for one guy to do. Tight as I can get it.
All right, I got the first three sheets up on the wall. I think they're looking pretty good. And I'm surprised I actually cut that all correct on the first try. So in my previous video, when I was putting the purlins on the walls, I mentioned that I wanted to do some lumber storage here on the side of this wall. I had several people say that, you know, that was gonna be a lot of weight on the walls and I ought to go ahead and add some extra support in here before we cover it up. And that's an excellent idea. That's what we're gonna end up doing. So we're gonna put some studs in here vertically every so many feet so that we can mount the lumber storage rack to those studs. But I'm actually gonna put those studs all the way down so that they're sitting on the floor. That way the weight of the lumber is not being support supported by these purlins. It's actually gonna be supported by the concrete floor. So this is gonna be a little bit tricky after the fact, <laughs> trying to get a full eight foot stud inside the wall. But I'm gonna go ahead, I'm using treated lumber because it's touching the concrete. So I just figure anything that touches the concrete, you're not gonna go wrong by using treated. It's just gonna make sure it lasts longer. All right, I've got all the added support in the wall now. So I've got the treated two by fours going all the way down to the concrete floor. And then up here is where the lumber storage is gonna be. We've added some two by fours to those to, to space those out so that they're the same as the purlins. And that lumber storage is gonna start right here above the outlet and it's gonna go up to there. And this will be able to store eight foot boards in this area. I've added a couple more right here I figure I can just add a simple shelf bracket right here in the very top of that rack. I'll be able to store 12 foot boards above the window. So one other thing I did is I added some extra support up here right in the center of the wall. And that is for me to be able to add a heat pump. I'm gonna do one of those do it yourself heat pumps. Um, and they can heat and cool the space. And that's where the inside unit is gonna mount up there on the wall. So I just went ahead, put some extra support in there before we covered up. So I already have the mini split heat pump that we're gonna install here. And I used the template to be able to know how to space those studs up there for the extra support. And that black wire, I don't know if you can see it, there's a black wire right there. It's running outside to a disconnect. So I've already got the power ran outside so that we can hook up the heat pump outside. So everything's ran, everything is set up for us to do it. We've just got to finish getting this room closed in so that we can actually heat and cool this space. All right, I've got all the full sheets of plywood all the way down the wall and it's looking pretty good. So the next thing to do is at the very top, 
there's about two feet missing at the top. So we got to cut out a bunch of small panels and start putting those along the top of the wall. And then all of the wood, or at least the plywood is gonna be done. So when we cut these small panels off, we want them to be as straight as possible. That way they butt up against that full sheet and doesn't have any gaps, everything looks nice. So I'm gonna use this saw blade guide. This is a Bora Portimate um, saw guide. It seems to work fairly good. Well, I finally finished getting all the plywood put on the wall all the way up to the ceiling. Pretty happy with the way this all ended up turning out. So this has been a very time consuming process trying to get this uh, plywood siding sanded, stained and put on the wall so that it's nice and straight and all the lines line up. Um, very time consuming. I'm going to guess I've got somewhere close to probably 24 hours worth of work in just this wall so far. Um, and that's a lot of work just for one wall, right? So in the end, I think it's worth it. Um, it's gonna be here for the rest of my life. It's probably gonna be here for the people after us. It, it looks really good, I think. And it's a nice, flat, solid surface that we can mount cabinets to, we can mount shelving to. We can just screw anything anywhere to it because it's nice 5 8 thick plywood. Um, so I think it's just gonna be a good surface for a workshop. So if you come into the dog kennel in here, so in here we finished the walls with similar corrugated metal at the bottom, but we've got barn metal on the walls. And this looks good. A lot of workshops use barn metal on the walls, but after I did this, I really thought about doing this exact same thing, or at least the white metal in there to be able to cover the walls. It'd be fairly, probably a lot quicker, way more time, you know, way more, less time to be able to put that up, but you end up with this corrugated surface where nothing is flat. So if you wanted to mount cabinets to it, I think that starts to complicate things. If you want to mount shelving to it, different things. I think um, I opted that I, I think I wanted to have a nice flat surface. So it was just way easier to mount stuff to and give me a lot more flexibility on what I put on the walls. Um, I think this looks really nice, but in the end, um, after doing this, I think I've gone away from wanting to do this on the rest of the walls and that's why we're going with the plywood. Well guys, I think that's going to be it for this video. We have probably got seven different days. I mean, short days, two, three hours a day working on this, but it has been several days sanding and staining and just trying to get this going. So I have been working and that's over the last two weeks. Um, maybe about two and a half weeks that we have been working on this. So um, I think I'm going to go ahead and end this video here and then we'll come back and we'll get the metal on this at the bottom in a different video. And um, we also have the insulation to do in the ceiling. So I don't know if I'll combine that in the same video, but I'm planning on trying to do the insulation here pretty soon because I want to try to get this closed in as so that I can start heating this space in the winter time. So um, I think that's gonna be it for today's video. Um, so glad to at least get another wall done. It's just a very time consuming process, um, but this is the way I want it. This is the way I want it to be. And I'm willing to spend that extra time to be able to achieve this look. But I think that's gonna be it for today, guys. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.